angels waging war in the unseen realm. Global events fulfilling biblical prophecy, eternal life. What lies beyond mortality? From analyzing the paranormal from a biblical worldview to the discussion of cutting edge science and technology, conspiracy, discovery, special investigative reports. Unafraid to explore the challenging issues facing humanity. Welcome to another edition of Skywatch TV. Believe it or not, there's a connection between the Freemasons, the ancient Mayans, and the ancient Egyptian god Osiris, and they all point to the year 2016. Welcome to Skywatch TV. I'm Derek Gilbert in studio with my best friend and wife, Sharon K. Gilbert. Hi, honey. And the author of a book that is very timely and very conveniently has the name of the year, the year in the name, Zenith 2016, Skywatch TV CEO, Tom Horn. Hi, hey. Tom. You did some really remarkable research, some dots connected here that were eye-popping. Um, you, you've done it in, in 2012 and again in 2016. What were the Mayans seeing and what are some of the other well, even Christian uh, pastors and preachers, famous ones, who, who pointed to this period of time that we're in right now as being especially significant. Yeah, you know, this was probably one of the most incredible um, periods of study for me and research. And a lot of people that have read Zenith 2016, you know, they say that's my magnum opus. It's the best thing I ever did. And it's probably because it was actually the last time I had an entire year that I could dedicate to just doing research and writing. So it was timely. Um, but what had happened was, you know, as you know, everybody in 2005, 6, 7, 8, mm -hmm. they were all saying that the Maya had said that the world was going to end in the year 2012, right? And so I, at that time, had just kind of a mild curiosity about it, and, and, but I wanted to find out, what did the Maya really say? Is this all just a bunch of New Agers? They're making up stuff, or they're kind of, you know, misquoting the Maya, or what was going on? And um, so I wound up getting the research information from an academic by the name of Richard Luxton. And uh, he was the guy that befriended the modern Maya and got permission from them after he gained their trust to translate a book called the Book of the Kumiel, or the Council Book of the Yucatecan Maya, that had been written down over 500 years ago, and he translated it into English. And so he, his was the work that I was following and was learning that no, the Maya never said the world was going to end in the year 2012. What they said was more interesting to me hmm. because it started sounding very much like the prophecy off the great seal of the United States, the Novus Ordo Seclorum. Mm -hmm. yeah. What they were saying was at the end of the long count in December 21st, 2012, essentially the cosmos was going to roll over into a final age of mankind, a final epoch that would witness some stuff that sounded like it was taken right out of the book of Revelation. Two great men would appear on the earth, sounded like the false prophet and the Antichrist, and then the judgment of God with famine and pestilence and sounding like the great yeah, very tribulation. Much so, right? yeah. so I, I, I started really getting into it, but I, I literally sat up in bed one night after I had read uh, where Richard Luxton wrote this. He said, the dates that accompany the illustrations. Now he's talking about the uh, the jaguar shaman here, the Chilambalam, mm -hmm. and some stuff that he had written, stuff that he had said and provided even diagrams. Uh, but he was a convert to Christianity as a result of the Spanish missionaries, the, the jaguar shaman. So he was mixing his Mayan beliefs with what he was finding in the apocryphal books of the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. and, and he was prophesying about the end. And what Luxton said was uh, he focused on the final 13 cartoons, which is a period of 19.7 years. I don't want to get us buried here in details, right? But he said that that final 13-stepped countdown began in what he called the colonial count, 1776. Whoa! Mm -hmm. Which would be followed by 13 steps and then the return of their God. And Why? those 13 steps were 19.7 <laughs> years. So I'm laying there in bed one night. I'm saying, boy, these prophecies of the Chilambalam sure remind me of the Sybil... 
And wait a minute, 1776, that's mm -hmm. the base of the uncapped pyramid on the Great Seal, yes. which also is 13 steps. And some of, the, some of the leading American Freemasons had always said that those 13 steps represented distinct periods of time. And so I got out, you know, uh, uh, my copy of the Great Seal, 1776, started counting the cartoons, 19.7 years, and saw where if you got to the top, right beneath the all-seeing eye would be the year 2012. Mm -hmm. But I also found out that the Gregorian calendar, our mm -hmm. calendar, yeah. the equivalent of the cartoon was 20 years, and that ended in 2016, 16. three and a half years later. So I, I literally came out of my bed and said, wait a minute, this can't <laughs> possibly, if it's a coincidence, it's a doozy, yeah. right? Yeah. To have 1776, 13 steps over which is hanging the all-seeing eye, and so that kind of launched me in the book Zenith 2016. And what people will find when they get that book and read it, they will be astonished at how over thousands of years and from all kinds of cultures, cultures that had no connection, you know, this was before the internet and iPhones and all yeah, that, yeah. right? No way to communicate. They all were fixating on the year 2012 and 2016. The Maya were fixated on mm -hmm. it. The Aztec had their own uh, cosmology about the end time, and they talked about the year 2012 soon after they said, uh, Bolan Yakteku, the god of the underworld who is down there guarding the bones of the giants. Uh, they say he, he's, he holds the key to the bottomless pit. In Mayan cosmology, they say he's going to rise up to the surface of the earth and the giants are going to come with him. Hmm. And then these nine support gods are going to descend down from the heaven. So it sounds like great deception and the pit is opening up from the book of Revelation the and the nine. giants are coming up out of the earth. The Aeneid. Yes, they, they, very much, yeah. So, it, But one thing led to the other. I found that Jonathan Edwards at the turn of the century writing letters at the university level saying the Antichrist will appear in the year 2016. We found in the Zohar because I had sent out this email. When this came to me in a revelation, I got up and got on my computer, right? <laughs> Emailed every smart person I know. Everybody's smarter than me. I need to ask <laughs> you a question, right? And it was, do you know of any connection with the great seal of the United States and Mayan prophecy? And we can talk a bit more about yeah. how I connected those dots in a moment. But J.R. Church, right, who used to lead Prophecy in the News yep. and got cancer, died a few years ago. He emailed me back and he said, Tom, he said, I don't know anything about the great seal, but he said, did you know that in the Zohar, the rabbis from 700 years ago pinpointed when the Messiah would appear? And in the Zohar, in the Vieira section of the Zohar, he showed me this. I went and read it and found it. And, um, it, it said that in the year 5773, the Messiah will make himself known privately to the rabbis in Israel. 5773 in the Gregorian, I mean in the Jewish calendar was 2012 to 2013 mm -hmm. in the Gregorian calendar. So that was what J.R. wanted me to know, that they had saw the year 2012 too, right? Yeah. Another group of people 700 years ago writing in medieval Aramaic. And this book, of course, the Zohar, is very important to Kabbalistic rabbis, right. mystical rabbis. Mm -hmm. And uh, so anyway, I found that. What I've noticed is interesting is the way that it's written in there, it sounds like it is even part of the prophecy of the popes in that they say that the, the Messiah will appear in Jerusalem in 2012 to 2013, make himself known to the rabbis in Jerusalem, and sometime after that he will begin making himself known to the people of the world. Well, you and I know that since then until even just this last week, major rabbis in Israel, several of them, mm -hmm. their most respected rabbis, mm -hmm. saying that the Messiah is here and his manifestation is imminent, even telling the kids that are going to their, you know, to the rabbi schools not to leave Jerusalem and be traveling. It's that imminent. It's right. that close. Yeah. To and him. you're pointing to his very specific prophecies issued by uh, uh, rabbis from several hundred years ago. The, the Vilna Gaon is mm -hmm. one in particular, mm -hmm. the genius of Vilna, which is the capital of Lithuania, um, said that the Messiah would appear after Russia took uh, Constantinople, which is Istanbul, right. uh, and the Crimea. Now, right. of course, Russia captured the Crimea from Ukraine in spring of 2014, and now with the feud going on between Russia and Turkey, the Russians still haven't really 
paid back Turkey for shooting down that plane in November. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are some possibilities there that we might see some open conflict, especially as the Turks are agitating for uh, uh, an invasion of Syria where there are Russian soldiers deployed. So yeah. th that's, that's just one instance where uh, the rabbis today are saying this from 300 years ago says that we should be looking for Messiah's appearance imminently. And there are groups of mas uh, rabbis who now who have opened an office in Jerusalem mm -hmm. specifically to search with computer algorithms mm -hmm. the Torah codes, looking through the uh, numerical uh, Hebrew uh, equivalents to find messages, and the years 5775, 5776 keep appearing over and over, and that would be the period of time from September of 2014 through o October of this year, 2016. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I just was going to say earlier, you talked about how we were sort of fed the lie that 2012 actually was the end of the world. And of course, we all dismissed it and said, hey, we're still here. Yay, 2013 is here. The fact is, I think the majority of people, not you folks watching this show because you guys know better, the majority of people in the world think that, oh, we, we, know, we dodged a bullet in 2012. <laughs> we're still here. They're not paying any attention to any of this, but it's right here in the open right. if we just... Look. Right. Well, um, there are videos uh, from 2008 and 2009 where I was doing shows with Gary Stearman on Prophecy in the News and Sid Roth, and I was saying that's not what the Maya said. They're not saying the earth is going to end in 2012. What they were saying was more interesting, and it sounds very much like they were, you know, they're, they're quoting the Novus mm -hmm. Ordo Seclorum that there is going to come the dawn of a final age of man. Now, here's another thing that's very interesting is when you read the, the Novus Ordo Seclorum and Anuet Coeptus. These mm -hmm. are taken from Virgil's Aenid uh, and his Ecologue, in which he's actually quoting the Cume Sibyl, mm -hmm. uh, the most powerful Sibyl or Sibylline prophetess uh, who was a, a prophetess of the uh, god Apollo. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Apollyon. Uh, uh, yeah, what the New Testament would call Apollyon, the very spirit that's going to come up out, there he comes, Bolan Yakteku and all the giants, right, from their mythos to ours, because demons also know that this is going to happen, and so they try to capture those stories, misguide mm -hmm. people into making it appear as if they're the ones sure. with the revelation, like, this, like the uh, Sibylline prophetess did in the New Testament where she's following the Apostle Paul around saying these mm -hmm. are men of God mm -hmm. in order to try to stake some kind of claim that she too is a true prophet. And so Paul drove the so demon out of her. Yeah. So he gets frustrated and casts the demon out of her and then, <laughs> you know, everybody's mad now. Yeah. But, uh, uh, you know, so now these rabbis though, it, they're behaving as if they're either total believers uh, or somebody has made himself known to them because that's actually how they're they're talking. They're saying he's here and he's going to manifest himself. Uh, yes. Now you've got a pope who also is a believer in prophecy. He not only is a believer in prophecy, he's also started to prophesy and that's kind of spooky. He's now telling people, get ready, the end is here, you need to prepare yourself. He's saying these things himself. And he believes 2016 is special too because he declared this a year of grace. This yes, yes, and to that end, just it was just announced just prior to recording of this that he's sending out over 1,100 specially hand-picked super confessors right. to here are the confessions of people who have committed what they call reserved sins under Roman uh, Catholic doctrine. Sins that normally only the Pope can forgive and offer absolution for. Uh, because apparently they, they feel that there's something is happening and they need to expedite the process. They don't have time to go through the special Vatican right. Council, which was the normal process. Uh -huh. Going back to the 12th century. Now we know this is not biblical. And no. we know that the only sin that is really unforgivable is blaspheming the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. So we're not saying that this is that this is you know authentic doctrine, no. but we're trying to understand what they believe. The uh, the Pope, the rabbis, these uh, th these other folks who are looking for these years to try to understand why they believe what they believe and and how it will affect how they act. But uh, yes, yeah. uh, clearly the Pope is believing that something is happening soon. That the, they're even they're even delegating one of these super confessors to go to the Arctic Circle and hear the confessions of Eskimo. Right. Okay. So this is. Well, S something uh, and, and, unique, and and we, you know we're trying to cover so many bases in this one show, yeah, but this even show, this yeah. even goes into the ISIS apocalyptic vision, uh, where they believe that Muhammad showed them, you know, 400 some years ago, or at least a hadith uh, ascribes him prophesying this war that would come at the end of time. But but they but they've made a video that shows them you know, uh, marching on Rome mm -hmm. uh, behind the Colosseum, and they come down into Rome, but but they're you know in their uh, apocalyptic end time vision, there will be an army called the Army of Rome, 
maybe something is going to happen. This is what I suspect. Something is going to happen. Uh, maybe ISIS uses a weapon of mass destruction, which then causes a coalition army to come together. But the Pope calls for the rejuvenation of the Christian rules for just war. Just war. Mm-hmm. And if he does mm-hmm. do that, as far as both you know, the world and the Muslims would see this as a battle being fought under the banner of Rome. So it really feels like there are a lot of people that believe that the year 2016, and they have for thousands of yeah. years, is very, very significant. Now, we're going to find out. Mm-hmm. By the way, I'm not saying that in 2016, you know, we're going to enter the Great Tribulation or the Antichrist is going to appear or anything else. What I am saying is when you read that book, you'll find out that dozens of people for thousands of years did say that. And that's really the question of the book. Why? Well, why were the disciples inspired to ask Jesus himself, what are the signs of the end of the age? Yeah, what are the signs of the end of the age? And as David Flynn, our, our old friend that's, you know, in heaven now, yeah. talking about talking this over with people smarter than I am, obviously. Mm. But his brother uh, Mark is carrying But he that. said that the, uh, you know, he was talking about the procession of the equinoxes and that mm-hmm. sort of thing. You know, David, right? Oh, I, gosh. Mm-hmm. I can barely quote him. Josh well, Pat can like follow it. it. But he said <laughs> that the conditions of the stars were exactly the same in the days of Noah as they would be following the year 2012. So that when Jesus said, as it was oh. in the days of Noah, he was talking about the, cos- the, the alignment of the planets and a lot of other really yeah. deep things being the same mm. as, as you know. If that's new to you, by the way, you have the David Flynn collection. Yeah, we do so have the David the Flynn store. collection. They can get it and, and read greater minds than mine. But the Cherokee Indians, 200 years ago, and you can, you can get these at the academic level. They're called the Chickamauguan Star Constellation Prophecies, or, oh. or more simply, the Rattlesnake Prophecies. Yeah. 200 some years ago, they go into a whole apocalyptic frenzy, and they write down how in the year 2012. The end of this era will come. Following that will be a final era of mankind. But they saw the return of what the Aztec would call Quetzalcoatl, Mm -hmm. what the uh, Maya uh, call Kukulkan, right? Mm -hmm. This serpent that has the power of air sometime shortly thereafter, 2012, returning. Well, this is the book of Revelation and this great war between God and the dragon, right? Mm -hmm. We need to take a break, but uh, I want to ask when we come back, how the Freemasons managed to incorporate this period of time, this this step pyramid, uh, and this the, the leading to the period of time that we're in right now into the Great Seal. We'll discuss that and tell you how you can get a copy of Zenith 2016 when Skywatch TV continues after this. From the time she was little. Nita dreamed of horses. Every childhood fantasy rode on the back of a heroic white steed, coming to save the day. I don't know how long I've had this love in my heart for horses. It's just always been there. And when we were little girls, my sister and I would play all day long. I was always the white horse and she was always the little pink pig. But everything changed in a heartbeat. On December 9th, 1971, a tragic car accident claimed the life of my dad and my best friend and my little sister. And I wondered after that if there was anything left to believe in. As a child of 13, I felt like I had lost practically everything. And I wondered, is this it? I mean, where do I go from here? (laughs) 
I could not have imagined back then how God could use horses, of all things, to restore my faith and vision for the future. Starting April 19th, get your copy of Nita Horn's inspirational new book, No Fences, and learn for the first time her amazing story of loss, survival, determination, and healing. How the vision and love God gave her for these beautiful and majestic animals eventually led to the 150-acre Whispering Ponies Ranch, a general retreat facility, as well as a premier training location that specializes in using and gifting therapeutic animals to benefit the herding, other care facilities, schools and ministries across the nation. When God puts something in your heart, it's there for a lifetime. On the back of the dollar bill in your wallet is apparently a prophecy that points to the year in which we are living right now. Welcome back to Skywatch TV. We're talking with Tom Horn, the author of Zenith 2016. How did the Freemasons incorporate this into the, the, into the Great Seal? What did they know about what the, uh, the ancient Mayans knew? Yeah, well, you know, and that, uh, once again, we started the show out early with me saying I literally set up in bed one day uh -huh. because I'm reading the Maya saying 1776, 13 step countdown, then the return of their God. Well, that's the symbolism on the re reverse side of the Great Seal of yep. the United States where it's got 1776, 13 steps, and then the all seeing eye. And I did want to know if that was just an amazing coincidence or if the early Freemasons were influenced by the belief of the Mesoamericans. So I started doing the research and when people get the book Zenith 2016, because there's two or three chapters dedicated to this paper trail, if you will, they'll find out that, that uh, you know, Manly P. Hall and others said that all of the most esoteric knowledge of the American Freemasons came from the Red Men out of Mesoamerica. So uh. you start finding out they were heavily influenced, but we found even more evidence than that. There was a, uh, an Italian painter who was famous by the name of Constantino Brumidi, mm -hmm. and he worked for the Vatican, and he worked for the churches in Rome doing paintings and stuff. Well, he migrates to the United States in the 1800s he becomes an American citizen and goes to work for the Jesuits in New York who were considered at that time to be kind of the real power, right? And, and certainly Rome's presence and influence in the Americas mm -hmm. in those early years. But abruptly in 1854, they send Brumidi Brumidi to go to Mexico for what purpose? To make copious notes of the Aztec calendar stone that ends in the year 2012, right? Mm -hmm. He comes back from that trip, he goes directly to Washington, D.C., where he meets with Quartermaster General Montgomery C. Meigs, who was the guy that was supervising the construction of the dome, the U.S. Capitol Dome and the wings of the dome. He's appointed to be, you know, the, the official government painter. And boy, this could be several shows. He goes inside the U.S. Capitol Dome and goes up into the belly of Isis, right? Mm -hmm. the, yep. the dome. And he paints the apotheosis, apotheosis of, Washington. Yes, exactly. of George Washington. George Washington mm -hmm. becoming a god. Mm -hmm. Now you guys had um, Mike Heiser on recently talking about the divine council and the 70 mm -hmm. uh, angels that were given authority over the nations and then they fell. Well, if you, if you follow that through history, and nobody knows exactly when this happened, but in Gnostic Christianity and in the, the Rosicrucian and some of the early occult movement, the 70 angels became 72. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows exactly when or why that happened, but they became 72. Mm -hmm. Well, in the apotheosis of Washington, right below it are 72 pentagrams for the purpose of controlling these angels that are over the world. It's highly occultic in nature. Right below that is what's called the freeze of American history. Yes. Now, if you can still, I think you can still go on a tour mm -hmm. of the Capitol Dome. Go inside and stand under the dome. Look at the freeze of American history. Mm -hmm. And of all of the things that Constantino Brumidi could have painted, right, in the freeze of American history, he paints Montezuma and Cortez meeting each other and here is the giant Aztec calendar stone that came to its conclusion in the year 2012. But right below that he paints what's called the sacred fire which means it relit in December of 2012 to give birth to a final 
era of mankind. So we were able to find fabulous evidence that the Freemasons were very much aware of the belief system of the Maya and did incorporate it, not just into the Great Seal, the entire city is laid out yes, uh, as an ancient Egyptian grid with the dome. It's based on the story of Isis and Osiris. Mm -hmm. But the purpose of those are to serve as a generator to draw the seed of Osiris out of the underworld so that he could be incarnate in the Pharaoh so that Egypt would have divine representation. Mm -hmm. And we found out that every inauguration of every American president across <coughs> town at the house of the temple, the Herodome, the official headquarters of the 33rd degree Freemasons, yes. uh -huh. every time a president's inaugurated, they conduct the raising of Osiris ceremony so that America can have divine representation, but more so, so that this prophecy can someday be fulfilled and that the leader of America will become Osiris, Apollo, incarnate, what the New Testament would call the arrival of the Antichrist. Oh my mm -hmm. goodness. Well, we don't make predictions, we don't set dates, but it is important to understand what other people think because, especially when it comes to occultic beliefs, to understand the designs of the enemy. And to that end, to help understand and break the code, Tom Horn's book, Zenith 2016, we're offering it to you for the list price of $19.95. But with that, these two books by Grant Jeffrey at no charge, while supplies last, One Nation Under God and Shadow Government. And if supplies one run nation out, under under One attack. Nation Under Attack. Big Excuse difference. Me. Yeah, that is a big difference. <laughs> one Nation Under Attack. Uh, if we run out of the Grant Jeffrey books, because there is a limited supply of those, we will offer other books of similar value. Uh, along with Zenith 2016. Again, 1995 plus shipping and handling from the Skywatch TV store, skywatchtvstore.com. Tom, fascinating work. It's an honor to be here to get to pick your brain about this stuff on a daily well, basis. Well, we're going to find out if everybody was right. That's exactly right. For Tom Horn and Sharon K. Gilbert, we thank you for watching as we keep watch. I'm Derek Gilbert, and this is Skywatch TV. To celebrate the release of Nita Horn's inspiring new book, No Fences, Skywatch TV would like you to tell your story, because after all, even if you don't think so, you actually have a story. Send in your story and we are going to choose the 10 best and they'll be published for Christmas release in an anthology of those stories along with the book that you uh, buy that is actually only 1995, am mm -hmm. I right on that? That's correct. For free. Tom Horn, crazy guy, he's throwing in a journal which on its own, these most of these retail for $20 on their own. So this journal is to help you start writing your story. Mm -hmm. When you buy the book, not only are you going to be uh, enrolled in this and you can send in your story, but you'll get a plastic pony, you'll mm -hmm. get a journal of your own, and the proceeds from the book are going to help fund the studio we're building for Skywatch Women. Mm -hmm. And Nita Horn is going to be one of our panel members. The 10 authors who are selected for the anthology published by Defender Publishing in time for Christmas will also receive a $500 cash and prize. And that, uh, that'll go a long way at Christmas time, won't it? <laughs> yes, it will. Even if your story is not one of those selected for the anthology, if you've taken the time to write your story, you've left a legacy for your children and for your grandchildren. Amen to that. For complete instructions and uh, details, on this uh, opportunity, please log on to skywatchtv.com slash no fences. Angels waging war in the unseen realm. Global events, fulfilling biblical prophecy, eternal life. What lies beyond mortality? From analyzing the paranormal from a biblical worldview to the discussion of cutting edge science and technology, conspiracy, discovery, special investigative reports, Unafraid to explore the challenging issues facing humanity. Welcome to another edition of Skywatch TV. Hi, I'm Gary Stearman. Welcome to Skywatch TV. And it's my pleasure today to have with me right here in studio, Tom Horn and Bob Ulrich. Now, you know Tom and Bob, if you've watched Skywatch TV or 
Prophecy Watchers TV. Gentlemen, it's good to be with you right here in studio. Yeah, good to be with you too. And how do you like the new studio, Gary? I love it. <laughs> it's wonderful, easy to work in. We've got uh, places we can spread out our notes. I feel very comfortable, Tom. But I want to get right to something today that I think is very important. We've got an announcement to make. Mm -hmm. In fact, we have several announcements that we'll be making over the course of this program. But we're going to be doing something very special uh, mm, a few months from now. We're going to be doing a prophecy conference unlike any other. Let's talk about that for a moment. Yeah, I couldn't be more excited. The Rocky Mountain International Prophecy Conference, and this really does have an international flair to it. I mean, we've got, uh, Bob, it's, it's, the, it's the biggest names from around the world. Anybody, everybody who is anybody, uh, if they haven't yet signed on, we've invited them to sign on, right? Well, and uh, I'm, I'm, I couldn't be more excited, yeah. It's not your father's uh, old-fashioned <laughs> no. prophecy conference. We've got the biggest names from literally all over the world. We're calling this an international prophecy conference because we're going to have people literally coming from dozens of countries, you know, all over the, uh, all over the globe. And we're going to, of course, have uh, the top names uh, in prophetic exposition. Uh, in, at, uh, at Prophecy uh, Watchers and at Skywatch TV, we really make it a point uh, to have guests who are eminently qualified to bring the messages that they bring, uh, who are classically trained, disciplined scholars, and people with a fresh and vital message. And that's going to transmit beautifully into this upcoming Prophecy Conference. Tom, let's, uh, let's talk about the months between now and when the Prophecy Conference actually comes. We live in crucial, crucial times. People are talking about the Middle East. They're talking about mm -hmm. things as dire as World War III, economic collapse. All kinds of strange things are happening right now, and strange prophetic predictions are being made. And it's, uh, it's in this context that this prophecy conference will be uh, born. Well, and Gary, as you know, I wrote the book, Zenith 2016. We've done shows yeah. on that book for a few years because I have believed for some time that 2016 could well be the most important year, both uh, in terms of the United States of America. We're going to have a new president. This could be the most critical election in the history of the country that could set the tone for, you know, um, everything from how Christians are treated uh, in this country, which we kind of see some of that eroding now. Um, but I also think that 2016 has a, to me, it has a almost like an uber charged prophetic significance about it. There is a, seems like a convergence of almost everything that is coming together. Uh, you mentioned the Middle East and what's happening in the Middle East. And once again, you know, we just made a deal with Iran and Israel is telling us, you know, you may have unleashed the beast with this deal. Yeah. We may have to deal with them. This could turn out to be some kind of a nuclear, uh, you know, uh, issue that could lead to Armageddon. You look in science and what's happening in the genetics revolution and CRISPR technology and people talking right now about how we're going to have to immediately set policy about when and under what circumstances we're going to approve genetically modifying humans. But again, is this Matthew 24? Are we talking about the days of Noah? Are we repeating something that once before brought about the wrath of God? Then the Temple Institute, calling to build the third temple. I oh, mean, yeah. ha have you ever seen a time where it's like every major hot button issue in the Bible that all of us through our lives have been talking about, all of a sudden it's, it's all coming together. And of course, some of the speakers that we have coming are handpicked because we want them to deal with those issues, right? Men like Randall Price to tell us what's going on with the temple, things like that. Well, we've been teasing about this conference for months and months, kind of building up the anticipation, lining up all the speakers and the names of the people we have. I want to give you the dates of the conference first, and it's really important you write this down. It's going to be July 15th, 16th, and 17th. It's a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It's going to be in Colorado Springs, Colorado at the Marriott Hotel. Now, I lived in the Springs for about six months, and I can just tell you, it's a beautiful place to visit. It's a beautiful hotel. Been there before, just wonderful people there. But we've got 25 speakers lined up, one name more spectacular than the next. Some of these names I'm not even worthy to introduce, Gary. 
Chuck Missler. Well, Chuck Missler, who doesn't know about Chuck Missler, author of many, many books, groundbreaking prophetic ideas. Tom, uh, you and Chuck have known each other now for, for a long time, and, and uh, this man's thinking is, uh, is stratospheric when it comes to his ideas and his teaching techniques, very systematic teaching techniques. When you sit uh, at one of his presentations, you are fed point by point, and you come away really understanding what he's talking about, in spite of the fact that it's, uh, it's phenomenal material. Now, uh, he'll be there. He's going to, I think, really kick things off in a wonderful way. Uh, Bob, we've got a number of... of Bill Koenig. Uh, Bill yeah. Koenig's oh. going to be with us. International correspondent. Uh, he is, by the way, a licensed uh, Washington correspondent, uh, travels the world uh, with his wife, and, and they have their, their, uh, their fingers on the news in a way that nobody else does, Bob. Now, we've got a lot of new names at this conference that people are unfamiliar with. I want you to talk about uh, Bob McGinnis. Yeah. Why don't you talk about Joel Richardson? Yeah, okay. Of course, Joel Richardson is known by a lot of people. And Bob McGinnis is known, if you're, if you're talking about like Fox News, he's a kind of a regular on Fox News. And that's because he's a senior analyst for the Pentagon. In fact, that's his day job. That's what he does. He works for the Pentagon. But he's also a believer. Uh, he is a Christian and sometimes outspoken so. Uh, and he's got his differences even with, you know, the executive level of the United States, as I suspect, you know, suspect a lot of people maybe in the Pentagon do. But he's been working on a project called Never Submit. And the whole idea, of course, is, you know, the name of Islam actually means to submit, uh, to make you submit. And his point is we will never submit. And what he's doing is he is focused on uh, persecution of Christians throughout the Middle East. But what he's warning is that the widespread persecution, even the extermination of Christians could get worse before it gets better. And we have to be concerned that this can even, you know, start materializing here in the United States. Already we're seeing, uh, you know, pressure being put on churches, uh, being told what they can say, what they cannot say. Uh, if you preach certain things that are old fashioned, it might be considered hate speech. And uh, he's laid out an entire plan about how we can reverse that course. And of course, coming from inside the Pentagon, he's got an insider's point of view. Now, uh, the relationship between him and Joel Richardson is interesting because Bob also believes, I don't know if he believes in the Islamic Antichrist as far as that theology, but he definitely believes that the Islamic uh, State is being driven by, you know, these ancient hadiths, this prophecies from Muhammad allegedly. Uh, and when you look at what they believe, uh, it's, it's basically their version of the apocalypse and Armageddon. They have a Messiah who is coming, the Mahdi, right? They have an antichrist figure, the Dajjal. And so between these two guys, I don't think there'll ever be a conference again where you will have the two, possibly two leading experts from a Christian eschatological point of view that are going to put into context for the world exactly what's happening uh, in the Middle East. So two powerhouse guys, uh, Bob McGinnis and Joel Richardson. What's going to happen when we add Avi Lipkin into that mix? Oh, there you go, right? What is going to happen? And Avi is going to come and he's going to talk about ISIS. Yeah. You know, and and uh, so many big names. L.A. Marzulli. I mean, many of you have followed us over the years, followed our interviews with L.A. Yeah. Talk a little bit about his trips to Peru and Catalina Island briefly. L.A. is always on some secret mission or other, uh, examining hidden uh, artifacts in, in some faraway place. And when he comes back, he has pictures, he has text, he has, uh, sometimes he has displays, things that, that he very carefully treasures. Uh, but he's really on the search of, uh, of the Nephilim. That is, he wants to validate the reality of the biblical Nephilim. And uh, I think it's, his quest is uh, is well documented, and, and, uh, and what's uh, what's really due in his case is recognition, because he's worked very hard and long uh, to to try to to uh, solve this uh, this issue, uh, which some people would just rather tuck under the rug. Bob. Now, speaking of those types of issues, we've got a temple controversy going on, and we have an expert coming to this event. We're just thrilled that he's accepted our invitation. He's going to be there with us next July. Tell oh, us about him. Dr. Randall Price. Uh, what can I say? His scholar of first magnitude has written about Bible prophecy uh, from the 
premillennial, uh, dispensational, pre-tribulational position. But he's also an archaeologist who travels, he, he studies, he comes back and he writes, and specifically on the Temple Mount. Was the Temple Mount actually on that specific platform or was it somewhere else? You know, Tom, there's a, a big argument going on right now. Uh, where was the temple? Was it on that platform or was it down in the city of David? Uh, Randall Price is going to be speaking to that. Yeah, and I'm glad he's going to be there because this is something that's on a lot of people's minds. There's some confusion about whether or not what we call the Temple Mount is the, the biblical Temple Mount. And why is that important? Well, because you have the Temple Institute. You've even got members of the Knesset recently that have talked about this kind of a, what is it that's happening among the Orthodox Jews? They're, they're getting a Messianic kind of feeling that something's about to break open. Uh, the Temple Institute recently, you know, uh, initiating this program to start breeding pure red heifers. I mean, there are, there, are, oh, yeah. there are concerted efforts that are actually being made to make the way. And of course, when we see that, we start thinking, oh, the appearance of the Antichrist, the one who's going to defile that rebuilt temple uh, could be in the wings. A lot of exciting things happening. And we're talking now about the upcoming Rocky Mountain International Prophecy Conference covering crucial prophetic issues. And this is very important, Bob. Uh, this is going to be taking place at a time when prophetic issues are at a, a state of tension I don't think I've ever seen them in my entire life. Right before the Summer Olympics, just a few short months before the USA elections, uh, L.A. Marzulli calls it the days of chaos that we're in right now, and we yeah. see that. You know, this is not a normal conference in any way. I've only listed, we've only listed the names of eight of the 25 speakers. Mm -hmm. There's 17 more. We don't have time to even talk about them. There's some even bigger names on here that haven't committed yet that we expect will very shortly. Uh, the event, and I'm not going to exaggerate now, I'm going to look right in the camera and tell you the truth. We expect this entire conference to sell out in just a week or two. We've got a thousand seats, be a thousand registrations. There is no more room. We're going to announce on October 13th online sign up. You're going to be able to go to prophecywatchers.com and sign up on October 13th. I guarantee you, it may be just a few short days after that, there will be no seats left for this event. You just don't find 25 speakers in one place with the names like these men and the subjects we're going to be talking about. Oh, that's about. absolutely right. Another thing um, is that uh, Skywatch Television is co-sponsoring this event. We will be there. I will be there. Gary and I will be emceeing the event. Uh, and uh, the, and so when registration starts, if they come to Skywatch TV, they'll see some kind of a graphic there. They'll click on it. It'll take them over where they can register online through Prophecy Watchers. But you said a moment ago, there's that there's you know this conference is unlike anything before. I think our whole relationship is unlike anything <laughs> before, right? <laughs> Indeed. Who does this? But I'm I'm just glad to be part well, of it. Well, two ministries. I mean, that are both only about 10 or 11 months old launching our first Prophecy Conference right. together. This is going to be a really big deal. Skywatch TV at prophecywatchers.com and we're working together and Bob Ulrich by the way is at the heart of pulling all the details together so that this conference will be an overwhelming success. Bob I know you're really good at that and we're uh, depending on you to do even better than ever this time. Gary, this is one of the easiest things to do in the world. Who doesn't want to hear about the things that are about to happen in the future to right. the world? It's exciting. Now we're going to take a break. Uh, when we come back, uh, Bob will have uh, departed and we'll have someone else sitting in that particular chair, Derek Gilbert. And so Tom, Derek, and I are going to have an extended conversation about Skywatch TV and Prophecy Watchers. Be right back. Here at Skywatch TV, we discuss a lot of cutting-edge theological concepts. In fact, some think we've gone over the edge with some of the things we discuss. But the truth is, we build on the work of giants. One such is George Hawkins Pember. G.H. Pember was an English theologian in the 19th century who saw the return of the days of Noah in the rise of spiritualism, the theosophical movement, concepts that form the basis of the New Age movement, which is influencing evangelical churches in America today. He wrote a lot about prophecy, not common in that era. But again, a lot of the things that Pember saw coming, we're seeing the fruit of today in our 21st century world. Most of Pember's works are out of print, and those that have been reprinted are often heavily edited. It's not unusual, not uncommon, not unheard of for a first edition work by Pember to sell for as much as $1,500. 
For the first time, Defender Publishing has collected the classic works of George Hawkins Pember under a single cover. The G.H. Pember collection, including his classic work, Earth's Earliest Ages, available for the first time in one volume from Defender Publishing. It's $29.95 plus shipping and handling. This is an invaluable resource for your reference library. The G.H. Pember collection, $29.95 plus shipping and handling from the Skywatch TV store, available online at skywatchtvstore.com. Welcome back. And as promised, to my left is Derek Gilbert. Hi, Derek. How Hi, are Gary. You? Glad to be here. We're going to talk to you uh, on an extended basis here in just a moment. But but first, uh, I want to uh, to go uh, back and, and and kind of rejoin a conversation that Tom and I were having a minute ago with this very exciting event upcoming. Uh, this uh, Rocky Mountain International Prophecy Conference upcoming July 15th through 17th, 20. 16 and and between now and then we've got our work cut out for us and you and you're going to be working with us at prophecy watch yeah absolutely we'll, we're going to be helping to make the world aware of the fact that we're mutually co-sponsoring this international prophecy conference some of the speakers i pick some of the speakers you guys pick some we both kind of just threw into the pot and put together. And, and you know you got a problem when the biggest issue you got is how in the world are we going to cut down this number because you can't take any of these names out, right? They're all the top people in the world. Somehow we got it down to whatever it is, something like 25 top speakers. So we're, we're pretty excited about that. And we have two ministries, uh, Skywatch TV, Prophecy Watchers, uh, just have ba barely gotten our feet on the ground in the past few months. Uh, and we have been uh, moving along at, at, a, at a very rapid clip uh, in, in, in growth. And Tom, I don't think either one of us had any idea no. how, how things would evolve. No. In fact, I mean, the, what, the, what the public doesn't know is that a few years ago, when I first started secretly talking to you guys, saying I'm going to start this television program, and uh, later on you became available, and I came and tried to beg you to be the host of my program, uh, you guys launched Prophecy Watchers. There was no way to know how quickly. Uh, in fact, you're, you're kind of holding the reins back because the growth could be so exponential. Right. You don't have the staff or, or the infrastructure to even be able to take care of it. And so that, that kind of brought us to this announcement that we yeah. want to make today. And the announcement that we're <laughs> going to make today is uh, that Derek Gilbert is going to be Skywatch TV's new host. And Derek, uh, I've worked with you over the years. We've met, we've uh, actually sat across tables from each other. And uh, I've always respected you as an interviewer, a broadcaster. You've got a, a long history of broadcast interest of various mm -hmm. types. And I just wanted to uh, introduce you to, uh, to the people that are watching us today. Uh, as the new host of Skywatch TV, what really interests you as a broadcaster? What do you consider the challenges? Where, where do you see yourself going with Skywatch TV? That's a really good question. Um, if somebody had said to me 15 years ago that this is where your life is going to lead you, I would have run screaming from the room. <laughs> uh, it's because the Holy Spirit has really led me on a journey the last 15 years, as my wife Sharon will, will testify. Um, when we first met, we had some rather energetic discussions about uh, theology, and I was not in the place that I am now. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, I, I've always had a real curiosity about the way things work and why things are, and there really is no bigger puzzle about the, what, what works in, is, is the way the universe works. What, what did God design? Uh, what are the rules that he put in place for us, if you will? I mean, I know that's really oversimplifying it, but yeah. so, so well, theology, doctrine, uh, the way he created this universe, uh, what is our role in it? What is the nature of the ongoing uh, spiritual war that's been taking place? And I know you're interested in the, the subject of uh, <clears throat> the merging of science and classic Christianity. Uh, we are in, into an exponential uh, scientific age where mm -hmm. everything is happening on an hour by hour basis and everything from artificial intelligence to genetics to who knows what, uh, everything is popping and happening and it's all happening according to a long ago written biblical prophetic pattern. And I think that's one of the things that I, I'm really fascinated by and one of the reasons that uh, 
I, I've been so impressed with your work over the years because doctrinally, you're, you're very scripturally uh, sound. You're, you're conservative as far as the basic doctrines of soteriology, how we get saved. But you have been on the cutting edge of that particular topic. What is the relationship between science and and scripture, what, what, uh, what, what are some of the other issues out there that, that we as the church should be addressing? The UFO phenomenon, what happens? Uh, the, well, the, the big questions that humans have wondered about since the beginning of time. Why are we here? Where did we come from? Where do we go when we die? And as you know, there are all kinds of answers that are in the public square right now that have nothing to do with the God of the Bible. People are looking for God at the helm of a UFO. Oh yeah. And that is, uh, you know, as a, as a science fiction fan growing up, that, that hits close to home for me because had my life gone a different way, had the Holy Spirit not gotten a hold of me, um, I would have been one of those folks who thought that, yes, yeah, someday we'll find heaven on a silicon ship. Yeah, well, I think through a number of media, including sci-fi, the world's being prepared for uh, a spiritual explosion. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Not all of it good. Uh, I think we're heading into some rather dark areas, and Bible prophecy said that we would head into these areas. It's happening quickly, mm -hmm. and I've seen your presentations. I know you're, you're ready for this. Well, thank you. This is quite an honor. Uh, this is what I wanted to do when I was a kid. And you do it very well. I want to go back to Tom for just a minute and revisit uh, <clears throat> the era in which we live. Moving up to this uh, Prophecy Conference uh, and, and speaking in terms of what Skywatch Television and Prophecy Watchers will be doing in the next few months. Again, these are crucial months upcoming. We're talking about everything from World War III mm -hmm. to uh, uh, and uncertainty about American politics and American economy. We're talking about the science go ha having gone half crazy. Uh, we don't know what's going on in those dark labs right now, but <clears throat> you've written about a lot of it and, and you follow these developments. And I know you're going to continue to do that. And, and so the, the prophecy conference that, that will be coming up in 2016 is going to be taking place in that setting. Mm -hmm. Talk about that a minute. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Skywatch Television really is the result, if you will, of an interest that I had after pastoring, which would then allow me to broaden the scope of my interest, you know, what I can talk about. You can't yeah. get it brilliant every week and talk about aliens or those UFOs <laughs> you mentioned a moment ago <laughs> as a pastor, but there were questions. And I knew that if I had these questions and I was asking for answers and the, the, the traditional uh, religious circle, Christian circle that I was in wasn't really providing any answers. How much more so the unchurched or people out there that are just, like you say, searching for God. And I can see now the hand of God is on your life, Bob Ulrich, Prophecy Watchers. I've seen miracle after miracle uh, working on your behalf. Uh, I think we're going to look back in a few years and be shocked and amazed and actually glad we didn't know really all that was going to happen because it might scare us now, right? Uh, and Skywatch Television is committed to the same type of thing. We want to answer the hard questions. We want to talk about all kind of multifaceted issues. Uh, but we, at the end of the day, we want it to be centered in a traditional conservative, Christian worldview. We are fishers of men. That's what we want to do. And so Prophecy Watchers is doing that. Skywatch Television is doing that. We have a very unique relationship. I've never seen two other broadcast ministries that would work together the way we are. And let's be honest, most people would be, you know, they'd be concerned. You might steal some of my audience or you might wind up with some of my money or whatever, right? And I'm glad that the, the way we work together is bigger than that. We know Indeed. that we have a mission that is important and time is short and that's what the conference is going to be about as well. And uh, right. when, when I ask this guy right here, Derek Gilbert, to come to work for me, I didn't have any idea that in this short period of time, he, you know, this mantle would be placed on him. I'm thankful he's been trained, you know, at the feet of people like you, you know, Paul <laughs> trained at the feet of Gamaliel and, uh, and, and has been a fabulous student. He's a sharp as a tack. I mean, this guy is good at what he does. You're going to keep doing the daily updates for me oh, yeah. too, aren't you? Yeah. 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 So. Well, and I'd like to not only uh, welcome uh, Derek Gilbert as a host of Skywatch TV, but also invite you from time to time 
as the occasion arises to visit us at uh, Prophecy Watch. Love to do that. Love and, to do that. Uh, and we'll have this cooperative venture. Uh, Derek, let me shake your hand. I wish you well. Blessings in the Lord. And in the closing moments, we've got about three minutes left. In the closing moments we have, Derek, uh, You've got plans, I know. Uh, I, I haven't talked with you about what they are, but you've probably got a lot of things that, that percolating that, that you'd like to do in the near future, right? Um, outline a book, working on that now. Um, we'll, we'll see how, how that goes. Unlike uh, Sharon, who can uh, you know, knock out uh, chapters uh, in, in a span of, of minutes, uh, I tend to do most of my work w with the uh, the spoken word, as my mother will be happy to tell you. Um, I began talking before I turned one year old. Wow. And I haven't stopped. So uh, that, uh, again, this is what I'd wanted to do when I was a kid growing up. Uh, but the thing that really concerns me about Christianity in America today is that if the surveys are accurate, surveys that I've read from the uh, National Geographic Channel and from Barna Group that does a lot of research into the state of Christianity in America today. Americans are four times more likely to believe that we're being visited by extraterrestrials than to believe in the God of the Bible. That is why we do what we do at Skywatch TV. That's why you do what you do at Prophecy Watchers. That's why I am, uh, you know, I, I feel this is a high calling to be in this chair. Well said, and you know I agree with you on that point. There is a subtle propaganda out there. And we are called to break through that propaganda wherever possible. And Tom, I know you're doing that. You've been doing it for years. In fact, I consider you to uh, have been on the cutting edge for many years when it comes to groundbreaking ideas. And, and I think that those are ideas that have come from the Lord himself. And uh, I congratulate you on bringing all this to pass. Well, thank you. And I'm looking forward to this conference. We're going to have a blast. It's going to be co uh, promoted by both of us. You and I are going to MC it. We're going to have to talk about it. What are we going to say? I don't know what to say. I, you know, when, when Tom and I are on a stage together, I don't ever have to worry about what to say because he simply takes over. <laughs> and, and it's always fun. Yeah. But it's serious, too. And, and I hope we can bring, bring together a, a good-natured civility uh, with sound doctrine and a keen eye toward uh, the unfolding events on planet Earth. Once again, welcome Derek Gilbert, new Skywatch TV host. It's been my pleasure today to uh, participate in what I consider to be a groundbreaking event in uh, the history of Skywatch TV. Uh, Derek, uh, blessings to you. Thank you. And Tom, thank you very much for having me here today. All right, I look forward to being on your program. And we'll do it very soon. All I'm right. Gary Stearman for Skywatch TV. Have a great day in the Lord.